Um, the main thing is everybody has flaws. That's not a problem. You just need to distinguish between red flags and deal breakers. A red flag might be she's a bit late sometimes. Like whenever you pick her up, she takes long to get ready. She's late. At the end of the day, I wouldn't call that a huge deal breaker because most women have a struggle with that. Or a red flag in a man might be that he um, might, you know, forget to pick up after himself. Yeah, it's annoying, but it's probably not a deal breaker because it's quite common and it's copable. The How you know what to stay away from is when something is a deal breaker and only you know what your deal breakers are. For some people, a deal breaker is a partner that doesn't make them feel safe. It's about how they make them feel. They don't say nice things. They don't give them enough affection. They don't give them enough sexual contact. For them, that's a deal breaker. If you know this person has that habit, going forward, that deal breaker is still going to come up. So there's no point going forward because the relationship is going to end at some point anyway. Another person, the deal breaker might be infidelity. If they see any infidelity in the future, they're going to end the relationship. But people who are unfaithful usually show you signs that they have that capability. They usually done it in the past or they usually are a bit, you know, they show you that they're still talking to an ex or previous people in the beginning stages of a relationship. So they give you the signals. So you just have to decide that do they have your deal breakers or not? You should only have two or three deal breakers. Do they have their deal breakers? And if they have one of your deal breakers, you can still be with them. I'm not saying you don't have to be with them, but you have to manage your expectations. Don't expect that deal breaker to disappear it's going to come up forever potentially you just have to ask yourself can I accept this deal breaker forever and if you can't let them go early on rather than being mad at them for being the exact person they showed you that they were in the beginning like, uh, sometimes somebody I uh, might have a client who uh, is dating a girl 20 years younger and um, it's really annoying that you know they might want to always be on social media they might always want to be into they might always want to go to the clubs but what I say to them is this is how they come when somebody's a lot younger this is what they're like as long as you can manage your expectations and know that yes they are going to go out with their friends they're still going to want to go on holidays they're still going to want to post on social media as long as you can adapt your expectations you'll be fine you can maintain that relationship but if you have the deal breakers and then don't adapt your expectations you're just prolonging the breakup it's going to happen at some stage it's like what you always say just know what time it is <laughs> i do always say that i say just know what time it is when you're with someone <laughs> you know when i compare relationships from let's say our grandparents to our parents to today mm -hmm. and then of course even the new generation beyond us mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of is just showing you know a complete different trend how do you yeah. think so and i get this asked often but how do you think social mm -hmm. media has played positively and negatively in relationships today um, positively is limited. I would say in terms of positive positive impacts, it's quite limited. The only thing I would say that's positive from social media is it gives people, if they use it correctly, it can give them a great income. They can get a really great, I mean, I'm sure you make a great job from using socials essentially. If you use it as work, it's unbelievable. It's a really great opportunity to make connections, to actually limit your excitement from the opposite sex because you'll get more and more of it and you get used to it. It's a great opportunity to really build connections and build a career um, but you have to make sure that the career that you're building is one that is useful and helpful and people actually enjoy but if you're selling yourself in any way shape or form whether that is your appearance whether that is your marketing like your cars and all that anything like that what will happen is at some stage you're going to really burn yourself out and the other thing is it's going to feed into our natural narcissism we all have an element of narcissism all of us do what social media has done is taken our narcissism and made it global and international. So the impact it's having, particularly more so on women than it does on men, on men what it does is has the opposite effect of narcissism. It makes them weak towards women. Because they see so many beautiful girls, they get weaker and weaker and weaker. Their self-control gets weaker. Their ability to say no gets weaker. Their desires get higher. So men are becoming weaker because of social media and women are getting stronger. And the reason I say stronger, but really I mean more narcissistic and powerful in the most negative ways because what women can do is replace every man they've ever met now by posting a few pictures what men can do what they can't do that but instead what they can do is fantasize about women that they never knew existed so you're creating an imbalance you're making women stronger and stronger and men weaker and weaker and as a result relationships break down when women are stronger than the men that they are with so we've created a culture of weaker men and more powerful women and as a result the families and the foundation of a family cannot uh, flourish and so how do you think we could kind of 
mitigate that? Or how do you think two people can come together and not be affected by, you know, the perhaps temptation of posting a, mm -hmm. a promiscuous photo and getting likes and this and that? One thing I would say is that women that post promiscuous um, attract men that like promiscuous. So it's not usually a case of a man who's totally innocent and dating a woman who's a total narcissist and posting online. Usually it's a man that likes the bikini pictures all day long and follows the bikini models who ends up with a girl like that. And then she'll be mad that he's still doing that and he's mad that she's still posting. They both have poor habits. They both have poor social media hygiene. The, I believe that the best way to kind of make mitigate that is you can't beat the world at the moment even if you wanted to you can't avoid the sexualization on social media you can't stand up against it you're not going to win but what you and your partner can do is reduce the impact of social media on you by the both partners deciding to behave in a way that is constructive and respectful to the relationship both people equally. So if I don't want you liking lots of girls' pics, I'm also not going to post pictures that lots of men like. If I don't want you following lots of girls, I'm not going to post pictures that attract a lot of male followers and vice versa. You both agree that we can't control what falls into our lap. We might walk down the street and meet somebody and something might happen. But at least the things we can control, like our feed, our For You page, what we look at on social media, let's try and make sure that what we can control, we, we try and avoid alternatives as much as possible and we try and make decisions on social media that is as respectful to the relationship as possible.